So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the School of Humanity, about what the School of Humanity is and what we do. So um, we're the high school for the world. It's a, it's a global online progressive high school. And I'm going to explain what that means in just a moment. Um, but just to give a little bit of, of information about why we do what we're doing, um, this is a quote from the World Economic Forum that says the nature of work and careers is changing fast and in the future the right skills will be prized over academic qualifications alone. So that's really one of our kind of golden focuses at School of Humanity is to ensure that our learners graduate from our programmes with the skills that they need to be successful in their future, both professional lives and their, their personal lives as well. So our mission is to enable the next generation to create purposeful future for themselves and for humanity. And the vision is to reinvent the, the global education system to really better serve humanity. So really to, as I mentioned before, to ensure that learners are getting the skills that they need or are developing the skills they need to be successful um, in this ever-changing and very disruptive world that we are living in and that will continue to change at such a, a fast rate. Um, so a little bit about the school, about what we do. Um, so learners learn by tackling real world challenges. So rather than learning subjects, individual subjects independently, they actually will look at a challenge and within that challenge, they will um, learn in an interdisciplinary way. So they'll really tackle lots of different um, disciplines within this umbrella challenge that they're looking at. Um, it's a personalized learning journey where learners are supported with um, a strong team of, of uh, um, mentors and facilitators and pathway advisors um, who really help them to develop the particular skills that they need to work on the challenge that they're working on and the areas that they want to be working in. Very personalized. Um, they're developing the skills for the jobs of the future. They're collaborating with learners globally. As I mentioned, it's an online global high school. Um, so we have learners actually in our high school cohort, we've got learners from 20, uh, sorry, 10 different countries, we've got 20 learners from 10 different countries from Nigeria, Uganda, Chile, um, the UK, the Philippines as well. Um, we've got a learner in India and Pakistan um, and the UAE. Um, and and so they really are learning how to collaborate with each other. They they you know they they work together and um, they learn about each other's cultures as well. So it's a great way of, of developing their global competency skills. And we also have a, part, a core part of our curriculum is focusing on flourishing. So finding helping learners to find their their purpose and meaning in life. Um, so just to explain a little bit how we're different from um, a, a traditional high school. Um, instead of rote memorization and exams at the School of Humanity, it's project-based assessments. Um, we don't focus on skills, we, uh, sorry, on exams, rather we focus on the skills, on developing mindsets and um, dispositions or behaviors. Um, we look at interdisciplinary, as I mentioned before, rather than teaching individual subjects. It's a flexible schedule. So um, although we have some um, fixed times where there are synchronous sessions, where there are live sessions, where the learners come together um, to do workshops and pathway advisory sessions and so on. Um, they also have a lot of their work, which they do in their own time, so they can really organise their schedule according to what works with them. Um, it's a personalised and um, it's we also have a, a very strong um, support community, which involves mentors from um, in industry areas. So industry experts who join us and who help the learners really dive into um, the content specific knowledge that they are looking for to help them develop their challenges. Um, so it's a, we're part of the um, Future Schools Network. Our supplementary educational program is accredited by WASC and we're in the process of going through high school accreditation. Um, and we're part of the Mastery Transcript Consortium, uh, which means that our learners will actually graduate with a mastery transcript. So rather than having like a grade card um, or, you know, with, with the grades for the different um, disciplines, they actually um, will have uh, evidence and a portfolio which shows the different skills that they've developed and their mastery level within that those skills. Um, so it's based on something called the Human Literacies Framework. Um, and this is based on research from the OECD and the World Economic Forum. And it's it, it's the core part of our, our curriculum. Um, so we have six different areas that we've identified um, as being the kind of the pillars of 
um, of the curriculum, which is flourishing thought, action, society, discovery and creativity. And within those areas, we have um, different kind of um, skills and, and um, um, areas that the learners will develop. Um, so, for example, if we look at society, then we've got um, different credit areas such as perspective, looking at history of humanity, political awareness, world views. Um, there are also things like responsibility, looking at human conduct, human rights, and so on. So you can see for each of the different areas we've identified, um, sorry, for each of the different pillars or, or literacies, we've ident identified credit areas that the learners will work towards. So every time they are working on a skill unit or every time they're working um, and any kind of um, assignment or project that they work on, they will be accruing credits within certain areas and the learners will like themselves will identify what areas they're working on um, and, um, and that's part of the, the mastery transcript. So these are areas that they will be building mastery in. So um, our learning journey, I'll just uh, talk about this. So, um, and just to emphasize something I hadn't mentioned that we have actually three programs. So we have the um, the high school, which was launched in 2021, uh, sorry, in 2022, last year in September. So we're um, kind of two terms into our, our high school. Um, we have an after school program, a six month after school program, and we also have um, a summer school program. So that's a, a five week um, intensive program over the summer. But they all follow a similar structure, um, which is this. So they, during the week, they will um, have workshops and boot camps. So these are where they're working closely with their learning facilitator to really explore the challenge theme that they have chosen um, and to dive into that, to develop the kind of interdisciplinary aspect. Of, um, of their learning. They have a pathway advisory session where they explore um, the, their future journeys, where are they going and what skills they need to be developing and um, things like how to have an interview or how to, you know, how to, uh, how to do an interview, um, how to write a, a resume, how to network, um, skills like these that will help them um, develop their, their kind of future direction where, they, where they're going in life. And we have a skills lab, which is where they develop core skills to help them um, work on their assignments. So things like essay writing, how to do research, how to write a science paper, um, for example. Um, we have flourishing sessions where they explore the purpose and meaning in life. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And um, the mentorship sessions where they work closely with their mentor um, to really to dive into the, the contents of the, the challenge they're working on. Um, and then we also have guest speakers who join us for masterclasses. And this was where um, Melissa joined us for the, the, the hybrid um, after school program that we have running in Dubai at the moment, um, where she actually joined us to give a masterclass. Um, and on, with the online high school, we have um, people who join us online every, every month. And this also just to emphasize um, that the master class is really an opportunity for um, learners to have direct contact with specialists and with um, experts. And it gives them the opportunity to ask questions and to have a, a really interesting discussion with the guest speakers who come in um, and just share about their, their careers or they, they'll dive deep into a specific area of expertise. Um, so these are the, the sorts of challenges that we have at the high school, but that we have similar challenges in um, the after school programs as well. Um, so, for example, the future of the Internet, media and democracy, the future of medicine, protecting our oceans, designing space habitats. Um, so these are the, the challenges that the learners will choose to work on. And then as they're working through the program, they'll really explore what that means um, and they'll they'll collaborate with their teammates and work on projects and then they will to um, after kind of exploring all of the content they'll then choose an area that they want want to work on to develop a personal project a personal challenge they'll identify a problem statement and wow. then work on a challenge to um, to solve it so this is what we call challenge-based learning. So there are different phases to the challenge-based learning. The first part is the engaged phase where they're exploring, as I mentioned, the kind of interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature of the, the challenge. They're so really exploring what does it mean. Um, so for example, in the first term um, of the School of Humanity, uh, we had one of the challenges which was called Our Common Humanity. And there they looked at things like human evolution and they looked at um, the touched on society. Um, they looked at the neuroscience, the, the 
how the brain developed and how it's made up the biology of the brain and um, they looked at aspects of psychology and um, they even looked at kind of working towards the future they looked at ai and and how that will affect humanity um so really encompassing lots of different areas within that engaged phase they then go into an investigate phase which is where they identify their problem statements um, and then they go into the act phase where they're developing the solution to the the problem statement that they've identified um, we have a, a, a micro internship experience as well, where they work closely with an organization that's aligned with their challenge in some way. Um, and here the, the organization themselves will set the learners a challenge for them to solve. And then they'll, they'll work as a team and then present that back to the organization. And then we end with a showcase where they are um, celebrating the work that they have done over the course of the term or over the course of the program. Um, so in, in addition to the challenge, we have skill units. So these are aligned with the human literacies framework. So for example, human body as a system, then that's aligned with the action and discovery literacy. And um, we've got data for SDGs, physical models. Really there's a, a whole array. We've got a whole catalog of skill units um, and learners will choose which skill units. This is very, um, speaks to the personalized nature of the program. So learners will choose which skill units they want to work on. Um, they'll identify particular credit areas that they need to build on. Um, and then they'll use the uh, work through the skill units so that they're kind of asynchronous working as um, to support their, their challenge what they're working on in their challenge and just to build their skills over the course of the, the programme. So the pathway advisory I mentioned before, that's um, where they're looking at how to build a, write a portfolio, for example, how to build a personal brand, looking at university admissions, what do they need to be doing to prepare um, to go to university if that's their chosen kind of career path or if they don't want to go to university then what could they be doing alternatively um, and what do they need to be doing to prepare for that. The skills lab I mentioned briefly already um, really preparing them um, for the skills they need to be able to do their assignments effectively and to improve their learning and um, looking at effective essay writing, data analysis, 3D design for example um, to name just a few. And then the human flourishing, which is really at the core of everything that we do, and the learners will have a, a human flourishing session once a week, but it's integrated into all parts of the curriculum. Um, this is really where they're looking at just how it's providing them with a toolkit um, of, of, of how to manage and how to cope um, in, in life in general, how to build meaning, how to um, develop things like mindfulness and meditation, looking at the science of breath, um, looking at how to reduce stress and how to control stress when you're in a, a stressful situation. So how to, you know, breathing exercises and things like that, um, and really um, helping them develop um, just into, into it's the, looking at the social and um, emotional side of um, their development. And then we um, we have a strong network and community. Um, so the for the educator team, um, we have facilitators, learning facilitators who facilitate the workshops. We've got learning designers who design um, the curriculum, um, such as the, the challenges and the skill units that I mentioned before. We have the flourishing facilitators who lead those sessions. Um, the advisors who, who lead the pathway advisory and who have one-to-one -one sessions to help the learners um, kind of really um, develop their own personal learning plans. Um, and then the industry mentors that I've mentioned already who are experts who support the learners um, dive deep into the content and help them with that. And then the micro internships where uh, we work with pioneer organizations. So just to give a few examples, we've worked with the Elmo Observatory in Chile, we've worked with the Young Investor Society, um, we worked with Rethinkery based in, in the US, uh, Advantica that's based in Switzerland, Virtualeap that's based in Portugal. So really organizations from around the world um, and that, ha that are specifically aligned to the challenge that the, the learners are working on. Um, so we ha have recently launched a learning hub at the start of this year. Um, so that's uh, the first of our learning, uh, learning hubs or hybrid hub, we call it, which is based in Dubai. So for learners who are in Dubai, they have the opportunity to attend um, sessions at the learning hub. They can they do co-working there or co-learning. 
Um, there's a team of on-site educators who support them and they have excursions and workshops on a Friday. Um, it's optional, it's not um, compulsory to join the Learning Hub, but it, it does, it's an add-on to the, the online high school. Um, and we are preparing the summer school, which will be um, starting in July. Um, we have online summer school. We've got one that's in the um, East Coast time zone in the US and another one that's in the GMT plus four time zone. Um, and there's also a hybrid um, or, or an in-person high school, uh, sorry, summer school as well, which will be in Dubai. Um, but if anybody is interested, then please do reach out or have a look at the website. Um, where there's information about it and the applications are open at the moment. Um, but we'll be closing towards the end of the, um, I think at the beginning of May. So um, yes, that's something to, to get on if, you, if you're interested. Um, we do have a learner showcase on the website. So I encourage you to have a look if you are interested in what I've been talking about, just to give a few examples of the types of projects that learners have worked on. Um, we've got Arthur who looked at shifting our value system, who created a three month community program um, to tackle generational poverty. Um, Hijab who looked at um, storytelling and podcasting to overcome collective illusions. Um, we have Sophia, who um, designed a robot that would produce oxygen on Mars. So just to give a few examples, and we have a whole catalog on, on the website. Um, and we do do, as I mentioned at the end of each program, a showcase. So the learners who will be joining us a bit later, we've got um, a group of learners who are gonna give a, a talk or a panel discussion on how to present um, the perfect presentation. And we also have a couple of learners who will be joining us who will present their challenge solution as well. And that's coming up a little bit later. And just a little bit of information if anybody's interested in the, the summer school that's launching, um, as I mentioned already, and the high school, of course, which will be, um, which applications are open for the 2023-24 um, high school cohort. And always happy to answer any questions and to collaborate. So if you'd like to reach out at any time, um, do reach out to me or, or to anybody um, at School of Humanity. And we've got a um, a social media presence, of course, so you can find us on, on any of those um, social media channels. Thank you very much for listening. There you go. Very good, Claire. Very good. Wow, that's a, that's a lot that's going on. Um, I would just like to mention very quickly that this video was made in April of 2023. And the reason I'm saying that is because we're going to put this up on YouTube and people could be watching this six months from now or a year from now, two years from now. So you may have missed the summer of 2023 program, but there'll be another one in 24 and another one in 25. So don't let the dates uh, stop you from, from contacting the School of Humanity. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. Thanks, Jake. Um, uh Yes. I'm oh, sorry if I interrupt you, but I have a quick comment about um the School of Humanity. I'm gonna ask my mom if I can join because I'm going to go to high school pretty soon. Where are you? What say that again, Alex? Um, I'm going to high school pretty soon, so I'm probably gonna join the School of Humanity. Amazing! I can't wait to have you there. That would be fantastic to see you at School of Humanity. And and why why are you interested in School of Humanity, Alex? Um, I, I, I there's just one thing that also made me want to want to go to it. That sounds pretty social, and I I like that, and it sounds very nice and. No, it, it fits in the things I like. So, yeah, I can do lots of projects with other people. And, yeah, that's the main thing. And now just before we move on, I just wanted to really quickly just say about um, the School of Humanity that, uh, what, that you're presenting, Claire. The one thing that I, I really think is so important that is sometimes missed out in education, but one thing that is happening at the School of Humanity, um, those key things like the mindset, 
um, you know, the, the, the soft skill parts, the mindset, the growth mindset, and there were six things that you showed up on the screen altogether. I can't remember the rest of them, but those core things, so many children, if they haven't got them, you can't move on to the academic stuff. Um, they can't, you know, it's, it's hard to grasp something and learn things if you haven't got those things, being able to hold, handle anxiety, being able to um, have that gratitude and the right growth mindset. Um, I'd really be interested to know more about how how you teach that, but I think that that's one of the core things that's so important for education that you've got covered there, which is lovely to see.